Over on Channel 2, we have Sale of the Century, but now it's 9pm, and that means it's time for the Thames Men. from Jamaica, a new sound to replace perhaps the Mersey sound. In fact, you might call this the Merseyless sound. George, how are you? I'm all right, thanks. How are you doing? I feel like Blake Carrington with a bit of jaundice. <laughs> Why Blake Carrington? Well, you remember Blake Carrington? He'd always wear kind of a cardigan and uh-huh. he'd always say, Crystal, you're nothing but a drunk. And I feel like, like I've got a bit of jaundice on me. I'm a bit and yellow after cardigan. Mexico. I was actually when we were recording the other night. You had that like little nice little blue top on, and uh, and I thought, why is he wearing his pajamas? They, they had a very look of like pajama look to them. You know, it was like it was a Brett on top, you bitch. <laughs> I mean, that's not uh, pretentious at all. Moi, no, it's not, no, not at all. No. Oh, by the way, I'm George. I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, bonjour, bonjour. Uh, Comment ça va? <laughs> yeah, I'm in San Francisco. Hello, everyone. I'm Alex. I'm in San Francisco, and you reached the Thamesman, the absolutely award-winning light entertainment, <laughs> light entertainment <laughs> awarded by who? A Lord knows. Us. Uh, light entertainment reaction channel with the odd bit of music thrown in. Yes, George. If you had a superpower, what would it be? <laughs> Well, it's the obvious ones, like flying. You know, wouldn't that be cool if you could fly? You no, know, you're allowed one superpower. One super. But can you have like one of those super? It's like it's like one of those things that we have. Jesus, you're allowed. You're allowed one. one no. Jesus, I give you one. You're now j- just one superpower. Don't try and you know. Could could it be the superpower be to be a, like invent more superpowers? Like you know, and then no. you have lots. No, it's just no, one. You've superpower. got one. I'll ask you again. Okay, George, you've right, got so. one superpower. What is it? Flying. Oh, I want to fly. Really? I want to fly like a bird. Cause, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Why not? You get cold up there. Not if you wear a jacket. And or what a would you on top, hair? you what know? Would you, <laughs> what would you do with your hair? Would you have a flying cap? <laughs> exactly. Goggles and the leather, leather, like, you know. I wouldn't wear my underpants outside my trousers, though. So. Where okay. would you buy your flying cap? Uh, Army surplus. <laughs> I'm sure I they... know you would look like I know you. Biggles. I'd be Biggles. Right, exactly. Biggles. You've got all these cool outfits and you would have a weird hat. Really dodgy Biggles look. Yep. You know. If you could fly, why wouldn't you? Because, like, you'd be like, as people went by, you'd be like, oh, God, I can fly. I know. I know. No, I've got one better. I'll be invisible. I'll be the invisible. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. So, okay. I'll be invisible. Invisible's got a problem, though. No. Invisible's got a big problem, which no. they never really address in the movies. Well, they do, sort of. What no. happens to your clothes? Do your clothes suddenly become invisible? Or you have to, or you just have to take all your clothes off? Then you're walking around naked, and then the invisibility wears off, and you're standing there, like, in the buff. Invisible, I'll still, I'll still do it. <laughs> That's just a bonus. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but what happens when it wears off, and you're suddenly like, oh, it doesn't wear off. Ladies and gentlemen, I do apologise. <laughs> right, there you, you go. started this conversation. We are in the middle of Scar Week, aren't we? We you would never have guessed it, really, would no. you? We've just we've just done Prince Buster and we are on day two. Now I don't know what all of these come out in because sometimes we get blocked or whatever, but today, as of now, in my Blake Carrington outfit, we're on day two. <laughs> and you're not invisible either. No, I'm not. And you're not flying. You would look like the Red Baron. You would look like a really dodgy Red Baron. You know, when you go into a tree and they catch up with you and you're all tangled up, he's like, who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> I can fly. <laughs> Get down here, Biggles. Right. So what day two, what have we got, sir? Ah, well, this is Ian Jury and the Blockheads, which is actually, for me, a surprising choice for Scar Week. I never would have thought it, to be honest with you. And thank you, Chris, for putting our list together. So we're sort of diving into this. We've got notes and and, and a sort of direction. And Ian Jury and the Blockheads. So, uh, well, Ian Jury and the Blockheads. And the track is called Blockheads. So, and we've got some notes. All right. Well, Jury was a a brilliant lyricist. 
We know that. He's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it was amazing. And the Blockheads, uh, once described as the uh, tightest loose band in the world. I tell you, they are unbelievable because they got Wilco Johnson on rhythm. Mm -hmm. And Wilco Johnson is mad. Just watch him. He's absolutely bonkers. Um, (laughs) But Jesus, what a rhythm guitarist. Yeah. Unbelievable. Tighter than a duck's arse. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, they're the Titans band in the world and number one uh, of uh, hits in the UK and Australia. Hello, Australia. How you doing? And an incredible Norman Watt Roy on bass, who is absolutely fantastic. And Charlie Charles on drums, lying, laying the backbone for the likes of Wilco and Dave Payne saxophone to showcase their talents. Yeah, remember on the last one? Yeah, oh, that was amazing. That saxophone, oh, fantastic. And he actually, and, and, and saxophone normally with music was killed in the 80s, absolutely yeah. destroyed by careless whispers amongst, but they seem to make it good, you know? Yeah, yeah cool. <sighs> anyway, right. Jury was a huge influence, not just on Scar, but a number of British acts since. Suggs of Madness, hard to say with the lisp, uh, explained how Jury freed the accent for singing. Absolutely. The guy is a Londoner, right? Yeah. And, I mean, you know, and he he sang in his accent. It was, it was brilliant. And also, you know, Suggs is a Londoner as well. <sighs> Allowing them to use their natural accents rather than trying to hide it. He also gave Jury credit for the makeup of instruments in the band. The song was often the last song of the night, and Jury would be helped from the stage, allowing the band to finish the night with a jam. He had polio, so he, you know, so maybe that they just, you know, lifted him off. <laughs> I don't, that's not very apt, but you know what I mean. Maybe they helped him off because, of, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, maybe it's that. That well, we'll see. Let's see what happens. So, yeah. He was bloody brilliant. I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really looking forward to seeing Wilco, actually. Yep. Excellent. Well, this is a nine-minute track, uh, and stick around, because there might be something else. I told you before, Wilco ended up on Game of Thrones. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah. Like, yep. So. As a mad guard, he still had that mad look. Like that. <laughs> All right. Someone, uh, said, yeah. someone said, I look like... What Joe fucking ninety? Yeah, <laughs> I still. And think- then, and then I saw someone said he doesn't look like Joe ninety. He looks like brains of Thunderbirds. I well, think. you see, these are all intelligent, like you know, role models. The people, what people say I look like, isn't so flattering. So I would no. stick with those if I was you. No, it's not as flattering, and I'm not saying who it is, Ron. Right. <laughs> I would stick with what you got, mate. All yeah. right. You ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Count me in, big boy. Send I ready. The, uh, car park attendant to the gardener. Three, two, one, go. Still can't hear you. Oh, hey, hey. All right. Oh, hey, hey. This is cool. We'll say goodnight for this one. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. This is cool. All you blockheads. This is for all you blockheads. All you blockheads. Oh, I got scared. 
bloody brilliant. That was bloody fantastic. That is a band at the height of their powers. Oh, freaking amazing. Well said. That that was uh, unfucking believable. <laughs> that really was amazing. I, I, you know, I was going around watching each musician. The, uh, the bass player. Oh, yeah. He was. He didn't get much camera time, but he he laid down that rhythm. Oh, oh my, my god. God and the drummer. 
drummer was brilliant out of this world and then i told you wilco he's so magnetic you can't keep your eyes off him he's mad mad as a boot absolutely mad as a boot but absolutely brilliant probably the best rhythm guitarist england's ever produced yeah yeah now now he was dr feelgood as well yes yeah I'd, and I'd love to do a Dr. Feelgood track. So would I. I love Dr. Feelgood. So would I. So would I. I'd love to do Dr. Feelgood. And he did that. He did that rock sound, right? And yeah, oh, that was but, so good. But, but the amazing thing about the rock sound riff, sorry, we're going on another song, but he, he learned how to do, he learned to do the chord and do the lick in there. So he's doing the solo and the rhythm all in one. He actually goes on YouTube and explains how he does it because it's so phenomenal. Yeah. And we put everything together, the rhythm, the stabs and the lick to give us this. <laughs> So phenomenal yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i mean and for those who you know saying hang on a second that's that's not scar that is 100 percent scar that is where scar met punk yeah in london yeah and in london in yeah. london and that was you know where we had bands made up of uh you know different races and whatever and and then it was a punk and the scar came together and it was cutting edge lyrics and it was sometimes Great it went rhythms. off beat sometimes it but that was 100 yeah. percent the best bit of punk scar i have ever 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 seen yeah and oh the the i mean we talked about last time the sax player you know in like normally it's like you know 80s horrible right oh god saxophone opposite total opposite here that guy was freaking wild i know i know and, and even the keyboardist we haven't even mentioned keyboard he was he i don't know what keyboard he was playing i was trying to see it and you know and and i know my keyboard so i couldn't work it out and he got an amazing tone out of that keyboard yeah and, and then then he injured himself oh the the crowning moment for ian jury for me on that was it was such a, a staged beautiful piece so for those who didn't know he packed up his stuff in a in a Sainsbury's hey. bag. Sainsbury's is like over here in America. It's like Vons. It's like Walmart. It's a, a generic supermarket. So he's making a statement right there and then. Right, he is your working class man. Yeah, who's done a show. Yeah, and he's going home, and there's no airs or graces. He's putting his bag. He's putting his stuff in a plastic carrier bag from a yeah. generic supermarket. Yeah, that's yeah. how down to earth he was. And that guy is smart enough to know exactly what he was doing. Yeah, and but it also had like because he had the guy to help him off the stage, and you know he'd done his piece, and he was out of there and stuff. It had it had reminiscent of the Cape Man for James Brown. You <laughs> did, I know. <laughs> Where James Brown would always have the guy who would like come and put his cape on him and then like lead him off the stage because he'd just blown the roof off, you know, yeah. and he's done, I'm out, you know, and he had his cape man and that was his job, the cape man, you know, and it was it had that feeling to it again, you know, of of yeah. like, uh, you know, it, it it was like I've done my piece. He was like, he was like working class royalty, yeah, uh, and he he was he was brilliant and his voice was great and he looked fantastic as well. Oh. Yeah, I, I took the other thing that it reminded me of. It was like so good. Was, do you remember that Prince track we did where the band just jammed at the end and they just yeah. jammed for a long time and they were ultimate musicians and they were just so in the pocket. Yeah. That band was like that. They were having a good time. They were playing. They were just just on fire, you know? I, I, I don't know if anyone's still with us, but if you are and you watch that with headphones, if you feel like us, that that was just unbelievable. That was a magnificent piece of punk scar of London urban early eighties pink. Uh, you know, uh, punk scar. That was great. Yeah. Now, now he here, here's the thing. We've got a bonus track. Bonus. 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 <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know what it is. I've got no idea. Yeah. So Chris, in, in our curated notes, he's come up. He's put together. He's thought that we should have a bonus to go with this. And so I think we're going to we're going to go for our bonus. Do you think we're going to have a go? We got time for a bonus. 
Um, yeah, we've got time for a bonus. Anything that Chris is, uh, we're getting spoiled. All right, so uh, shall I read the words? Do it because this okay. has a link to what we just saw. So I've yeah. got no idea what he's tapped on here. Okay. Madness, which is an English band who uh, we saw, you know, with oh, we Sugs. saw Suggs with the yeah. with the yeah yeah, and, and they're a real big ska band in England. Yeah. Um, okay, so Madness, I had asked Jury to guest on their new album after running into him in a hotel. Hopefully, they didn't knock him over. Oh. Uh, single uh, drip. Fred Fred was a result with Jury taken on the lead vocals. The performance on Jules Holland, who refers to him as the Poet Laureate, well said, yeah. was the second last public performance before his death from cancer four months later. Well said. All right. No, all it's, right. Yeah. Okay. It's all this tied is, together, uh, though, because we, we, we had the Prince Buster, we, which uh, and he had uh, Suggs on, and... You know, there is there. They're all very a madness named their band after a Prince Buster song, yeah, yeah, uh, which is the original Scar person. And now we've taken you know Suggs, and now on to Madness, um, and now on to uh, sure in- with him and Madness together. This is all linking together. You're a smart man, Chris. Very clever. All right, should we do it? All right. So trip okay. fed fled. All right. Uh, recorded on Jules Holland again. Fantastic. All madness. right. Three. Two, one, boom. We want Freddy for a leader. Freddy is a man of class. We want Freddy for a leader. Who's oh, said Santa Rachel Chevrolet class? Well, well. Gentlemen and assassins and ladies of the night, I've called upon you this evening in the open shed. Life. I can't go into detail or finger unfounded fools, but there are some here amongst us who ain't playing by the rules. I've rounded up the low life and local CID. I'm offered a free massage or else a third degree. There is no simple solution to this life we lead. So make things easy on yourself to the baronies can see. Oh, 
So English, wasn't it? It's so good, yeah. Uh, it's just, good. just perfect, you know. It's like it's so London as well. So London, yeah, perfect. So London, that was so great. And Ian Jury again was the star of the show there. Yeah, you know? and and it's kind of it's kind of weird now. Kind of you know, twenty years later, I'm starting to realise how good Madness were. You know, I just. Yeah. Grew- you know, I just grew up with them just, oh, they're a ska band, right? And they're just, we On got cooler ska. Yeah, yeah, we got cooler ska bands and we got whatever. But they seem, he seems to be the authoritative. And I didn't realise that. Yeah. And, and like just really interesting music, you know, and like, uh, like, yeah, completely mad madness, you know, but they, they had some, they did have some really good music, you know. Yeah. And that, that the priest couldn't understand a bloody word he said. Brilliant. He, he was like the guy out of uh, Father Ted. Yeah. He you know, was that, that, yeah. the, the, the priest of fuck up, fuck And and then uh, these lot, you know, if you meet them down the alleyway, you would crap your pants, right? The east end and like, but really, and then they get on the stage, they're playing ding ding dong 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 dong. One of them's got a hat on, you know what yeah. I mean? They're absolutely mad. Yeah, and no, what madness, obviously. Mm-hmm. So, oh, All right, well, that brilliant. That that was a joy. That was an absolute joy. This is great. All right, well, thank you so 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 much. If you could like, subscribe to the channel that would really please us so thank you very much and, and um around for uh leave you know thingies you know yeah the comments and um we got lots coming up Cohen week we got uh more Aussie more scar stuff. week more scar week we've got canadian week in the works that one's been that one's been brewing in the oven for quite some time yeah just dating just dating all right see you on the next one well, maybe i think i'll show up for the next one will you all right, well, you bet. You guys better show up as well then. So yeah, yeah. see you on the next one. Otherwise, we're not going to show up. Yeah, bollocks to that. Bollocks. Cheers. Bye.